bien de parte del Señor. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Melody. Good evening. Thank you for connecting. We're gonna we're gonna wait uh, maybe two minutes, okay? I'm gonna send the the other students a message. Teacher, your mic is off. Oh, there you go, sorry. Hello, everybody, thank you for connecting. Uh, we're going to continue uh, with the lessons for the TOEFL test. And today, this week, we're going to be focused on listening, okay? All right, so let's go over the presentation that we had yesterday to touch up on some things, the type of questions that we have on the test. And then we're going to look at different strategies, right? So we're going to focus on listening. All right.
Okay, so yesterday we were looking at different type of questions, right? Just some, some information about the questions, right? Uh, the questions are going to be a conversational questions or they're going to, they're going to be academic questions like a, like a lecture from, from a prof professor. Uh, maybe they're talking about science, social studies, arts, business, uh, one of the normal subjects that you will see in the university. Type of questions, well, we have uh, basic comprehension questions. Usually these questions are just WH questions. What, when, how, uh, normal WH questions. Also, we have true and false questions on the test, okay? Questions, uh, other type of questions are pragmatic questions. What are these pragmatic questions? Basically, they, they transmit the attitude of the speaker. Uh, is the speaker upset? Is the speaker happy? Is he trying to prove a point? What is his attitude? Does he agree or disagree with the topic? So this is pragmatic questions. Then we have connecting information questions. These questions uh, talk about the relationship between ideas, right? So basically, for example, they say idea number one, we're going to connect it to idea number two, right? So this is idea one. How do you connect it to idea number two? What is the relationship between these two? That is uh, an example of connecting information questions, okay? Maybe it can be something like, uh, how does this affect this? You know, something like that. So these are connecting questions. They're going to connect one idea with the other idea. Remember in the listening uh, yesterday, we saw that there are some questions that have more than one main idea. Okay, the next question is main idea questions, right? This is the, uh, what is the topic about? Uh, what is the specific topic, right? The specific topic. Where do we find this type of questions? Do you guys remember? Where do we find the, the, the information? I'm sorry, where do we find the information for these questions? In the audio, but where? In the beginning, in the middle, in the end? Where do we usually find? <laughs> It's usually at the beginning, right? The first, sometimes the first sentence in the audio. So that's where you go, you're going to find the main idea, usually at the beginning. Another type of question that we have is purpose question, okay? So if uh, that's what we're, we're going to talk about these today because we have a, another type of questions, the uh, uh, just main idea questions and just purpose, purpose questions. We're going to talk about this. But ba basically, uh, they ask you, what's the point of it? Why is it there? Okay. All right. Implication questions. These are cause and effect, right? If this happens, this will happen. Cause and effect. What is the result of something based on the passage? What will be the problem or the result? Uh, what will be the positive result? It can be negative or positive. So this is a cause and effect question, an implication question. Another type of question that we have is inferences. Inferences, you have to make a logical conclusion, right? So you have to guess basically, right? It's a subjective guess but you have to use logic and the information in the passage. So this is an inference question. También este tipo de pregunta estaba en reading también. ¿Se acuerdan? Inference questions. So it's the same for listening. We have also inference questions. And then we have detailed questions. Details questions are going to include information, specific data. For example, places, names, dates, numbers, okay, specific information, okay. For example, uh, what year, this could be an example, what year did America um, 
uh, finish the civil war. Right? It's a this is a, a could be a, a question. Here I'm looking for a year. So I'm looking for a specific date. This is a detailed question. Okay. Eh, solo estoy repasando, right? Um, esto es lo que vimos ayer. Si tienen, quieren ver esto un poco más detallado, pueden ver el video de ayer, ¿verdad? Todo, ahí está en nuestra play playlist. Okay. All right. Questions? Questions? All right. So ayer eh, vimos las instrucciones de la, del test, right? Uh, so vale la pena solo recalcar algunas cosas. Uh, you can only listen to the passage how many times? Only one time. So you, you can only listen to the audio one time. Okay. What type of uh, conversations? It can be conversations between students or between student and the professor, etc. Or it can be lectures. What is a lecture? What is a lecture? It could be like a history. A, yes, uh, it can be a history. So, for example, in the university, right? When the professor is going to give a presentation or he's going to talk for maybe 30 minutes, an hour, that is a lecture, okay? It's a lecture. So this is a professor usually, right? Someone with experience speaking about the topic. Conversation is usually two people, right? This is usually one person, okay? Uh, you can only listen to the passage one time, okay? In some questions, you're going to make an inference, right? Uh, inference, you can also purpose questions. Um, also, you can have uh, questions about the speaker's attitude, the tone, or the context, okay? All right, very good. Um, everything else is, oh, how, how, much, uh, how much time do you have to, to finish the audio? Well, the moment that you hit play, okay? So cuando le das play, ahí empieza el tiempo, okay? Usually it's going to be on the new to uh, TOEIC IBT, it's gonna be about 30, Four to 36 questions, maybe. Por ahí está el número de preguntas, all right? So you're going to have maybe, I think it was five passages, quiero decir, maybe, with I think six questions, algo así es. Okay, so five passages with uh, six questions it, each, is 30 questions, and then you have some extra ones there, okay? So yesterday, eh, para los que no, está, no estaban aquí ayer, hicimos un examen, okay? Ahora vamos a hacer otro también, right? Un listening test. So vamos a practicar ya con algo que es eh, verdad. All right, questions? Okay. All right, so it's important that you become familiar with the instructions, right? So, para que cuando agarren el examen no gasten ahí cinco minutos tra tratando de, de descifrar las instrucciones, ¿no? Right? You, listo, ready. All right, ready, understand. I'm ready for the test. Okay, this is an example of a question. All right. If you look here at this question, what type of questions do you think this is? Main idea, right? Main idea. Yeah. Correct. Main idea question, very good. Uh, this question here, how is the lecture organized? Okay. So you have to pay attention there. This is more like a context question. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me go to the next one. Solo estamos viendo algún, así como, como aparecen en el examen, some of the questions. Look at this question, number five. Why does the professor say E? Tienen que darle play y le va a salir o, el, del, del mismo audio, le va a salir una, una sección solamente. Why does the professor say blah, blah, blah? Okay. And you have to hit play 
so that you can listen to that section again. Okay. Now, recuerden, solamente todo el audio solamente lo van a escuchar una vez. Pero puede que le salga una pregunta así. Okay. Un, donde le da la opción de poder solo escuchar una parte. Eh, question number six. Look, I have two answers. According to the lecture, what evidence did Wagner find to support the theory of Pangea? Uh, select two. So you have two answers in some cases. Okay. Ayer aprendimos bastante sobre estrategias, ¿verdad? Cómo definir, ¿ok? Si van a seleccionar dos, tienen que estar relacionadas, ambas, right? Because eh, estamos hablando solo de what evidence, ¿ok? So si van a elegir, por, ex, por ejemplo, A, you're going to select A, for example, um, you have to match another answer that is the same. Okay. All right. Questions? Okay. Also, we learned something very important. What are you going to do with the, during the listening section? What are you going to do? Van a cruzar los brazos y solo van a escuchar. No. No. Take right. notes. Yes. Yeah, take very notes. important. Take notes, right? So that is very important, right? Porque esto, esto sí el examen les permite hacer. Take notes, okay? Solo pueden escuchar el audio una vez, pero you can take notes, right? So this is very important. Uh, we, we learned some different ways to take notes, right? Eh, como estrategias para notes, right? Uh, look at this one. Uh, this is exactly how it appears on the test, right? So en el examen así aparece esta pregunta. Right, so antes de darle play, right, what you can do is write this in your notebook so that you can start taking notes, right? Yes, aquí hay como un outline, right? Outline. This is basically an outline that they're giving me. So the conversation is usually going to go like this. Primero va esto durante la conversación, right? Then this, then this, then this, right? Y ayer escuché, escuchamos esto, ¿se acuerdan? Okay. So this is a good way to do and take notes. Write exactly what you see here. Hit play and then start taking notes, okay? ¿Qué más aprendimos de notes? Note taking. What else did we learn? Very important, right? Taking notes is going to be very important. Now, hay muchos diferentes estrategias, right? So you can, for example, divide your notebook, main ideas, and details, okay? That, that's another way you can do it, right? Esa es una forma, all right? So uh, there's different kinds of uh, forms that you can do. We also learned you can do maybe a cluster, salmon cluster. Um, you can do, for example, something like this, right? And have different ideas coming from here, okay? You can do notes like this. Inside the circle, you're going to put the topic or the main idea, right? And then each one is going to be supporting details. So, esta es otra forma, right? I mean, no, no hay un método específico, whatever works for you. So my recommendation is that you try different notes, right? Eh, diferentes métodos que les puede funcionar, okay? Si no tienen uno, pues usen el que ya está acá, en la pregunta, right? So you can just copy this, right? But try different strategies, right? Today we're going to talk about uh, two strategies that you can use. All right, eh, les recomiendo ver el video de ayer, si no lo han visto, eh, porque hicimos todo esto, right? Okay, uh, that's it. I want to go now to the lesson that we have today, and we're going to do another test today. So we're going to practice a listening test today. The test is going to be about 40 minutes. So let's get started. All right, uh, we have two type of questions you can say just contact 
and just purpose questions. Okay. So in reality, the only difference is, entonces, ¿qué significa content? ¿Qué significa purpose? Okay, ya vamos a ver. Okay. All right. Gist. ¿Qué significa gist? What is the definition of gist? Gist is the substance or the essence of the conversation or lecture. It is like the key idea. Okay. It's like, for example, this is a good example, right? Digamos que estamos viendo un reportaje de CNN, right? Unos reportajes esos que salen en YouTube ahí que son como tres minutos, right? So you're watching CNN, they're talking about uh, the coronavirus or whatever, and you see a video on YouTube that's only two minutes, right? A two minute video, a little clip. What is the gist? What is the substance? What is the essence? What is the key idea? Okay. So as I said, the gist. What is it? What is it about? What's the essence? Right. Okay. Questions. Okay. So here's an example. When you listen for the gist, listening for the gist is similar to skimming a passage in reading. ¿Se acuerdan esa habilidad? ¿Se acuerdan que hicimos skimming and scanning? Right? For the reading. Okay. So skimming was looking for the main idea. It's the same. Okay. So gist and skimming is the same. Okay. The key is to ask students one or two questions that focus on the main idea or, or the tone or the mood in the whole passage. Okay. All right, very good. Questions? Right? So esa conexión entre gist y skimming es importante, right? Because basically it's the main idea. All right. Now, what is gist content questions? Gist content questions ask you to identify the main topic or the main idea in the conversation. Okay? So, una vez más, skimming is a good tool. Where do we find the gist content? At the beginning of the conversation. Okay. Very good. So, that's number one, gist content question. Let's look at number two, gist purpose questions. Gist purpose questions ask you to identify the purpose of the lecture. So, una sería la main idea, right? La otra sería, ¿cuál es el propósito? Okay, why is it there? It will answer questions such as, what is the professor trying to say? What is the speaker's attitude about this topic? Why is the speaker saying this? What is he or she trying to get across? It's the reason or something, okay? Es el por qué. It's the why, okay? So just, just purpose questions is the reason why, okay? ¿Cómo se llamaba la otra? Just content, right? Que sería la main idea, right? We can use skimming at the beginning of the passage. But what is just purpose questions? Es el porqué, the why of the main idea. Okay, questions? Questions? Okay, very good. Uh, let, me sh let me share this video with you. And I think, uh, ah, listen for these phrases. Uh, this is, sometimes you're going to see this in the, in the, in the questions. What is the passage mainly about? What is the professor mainly discussing? Why does the student say blah, blah, blah? What is the main purpose of the conversation? Okay, so esto va a ser bien común for the questions. Okay. All right, let's watch this, uh, this video that I have for you. So let me share computer sound. And listen up for this video 
that is basically trying to under, uh, explain the difference between just content questions and just purpose questions. Hi, I'm Michael from ETS. Today on Inside the TOEFL Test, we're going inside the TOEFL IBT. Oops, sorry. The listening section, specifically the GIST content and GIST purpose questions. The GIST of something is the main point or key idea. In the TOEFL IBT test, GIST content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. GIST purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize GIST content and GIST purpose questions because they use phrases like mainly about, mainly discussing, why does the student, or what is the main purpose. Here are two things to keep in mind when answering GIST content and GIST purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a GIST content question or a GIST purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the GIST content or GIST purpose question may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some sample GIST content and GIST purpose questions. First, we'll listen to part of a conversation between a coach and a student, catching up on what happened while the student was away. Okay, very good. So now you're going to have an example question like on the test, right? So, ¿qué vamos a hacer primero? Take notes, right? We're going to take notes for this section, okay? So this is this is my recommendation, right? Para usar esta, esta misma estrategia. Uh, what you can do is something like this, right? Let's, uh, let's do something like this. Uh, we're going to put here in the first one, just content. And in the second square, we're going to put just purpose questions, okay? So remember here, it's going to be the main idea, right? The main idea of Aida Key, okay? And then why, el porque, the reason why the main idea is gonna go here, okay? So let's try to take notes doing something like this, okay? So this reading is gonna be about three minutes, but I want you to take notes and we're going to answer some questions after. Hi, Elizabeth. Hey, coach. I just thought I'd stop by to see what I missed while I was gone. Well, we've been working real hard on our plan for the next game. I've asked Susan to go over it with you before practice this afternoon, so you'll know what we're doing. Okay. By the way, how did your brother's wedding go? Oh, it was beautiful, and the whole family was there. I saw aunts and uncles and cousins I hadn't seen in years. So it was worth the trip? Oh, definitely. I'm sorry I had to miss practice, though. I feel bad about that. Family's very important. Yep. Okay, uh, I guess I'll see you this afternoon at practice, then. Just a minute. There are a couple of other things I need to tell you. Oh, okay. Uh, first, everybody's getting a new team jacket. Wow. How'd that happen? Uh, a woman who played here about 20, 25 years ago came through town a few weeks ago and saw a game and said she wanted to do something for the team, so... So she's buying us new jackets? Yep. Wow, that's really nice of her. Yes, it is. It's great that former players still care so much about our school and our basketball program. Anyway, you need to fill out an order form. I'll give it to you now so you can bring it back this afternoon. I've got the forms from the other players, so as soon as I get yours, we can order. Maybe we'll have the jackets by the next game. Okay. Great. And the next thing is, you know Mary's transferring to another college next week, so we'll need someone to take over her role as captain for the second half of the season. And the other players unanimously picked you to take over as captain when Mary leaves. Wow. I saw everybody this morning and nobody said a word. They wanted me to tell you. So, do you accept? Of course. 
So an example of a gist content question for this passage is, what are the speakers mainly discussing? Okay, let's try to answer that question. What is the speakers mainly discussing? A, how the woman should prepare for the next game. B, the woman's responsibility as team captain. Uh, C, things that happened while the woman was away. And D, the style of the new team's uniform. Main idea of the past. I say, this is C. I, uh huh. Right? I because they, they discuss different things, right? They discuss different things, right? Uh, for example, um, one of the things that they, well, at the beginning, the coach says, right, the main idea. He says, I wanted to go over the, the plans for next game. So I wanted to discuss with you the plans for next, for next game, okay? Tocar algunos puntos, right? El, el plan que ellos tienen for next game, okay? And then they had a little, like a side conversation about family, right? Because the player, the girl, she went on vacations, right? For two weeks, she went to see her family. And then the coach says, okay, I got some things I want to talk to you about. Number one, this uh, jacket, right? The team jacket, remember? The team jacket that they wanted to discuss that someone was giving them the team jacket and ella tenía que hacer algo. ¿Se acuerdan lo que tenía que hacer ella? El coach le pidió que llenara algo. Or, yeah, or, yeah, fill or, out a form, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. And number two was uh, captain, the captain position, right? The coach was offering her the captain position for the team. Okay, very good. So más o menos así, that's, that's what I have, right? Eh, tal vez tus notas se miran diferente, that's fine. Um, so the main idea sería A, how the woman should prepare for the next game. Mm, yes, but maybe it's not, it's not the main, main idea. Uh, the woman's responsibility mm -hmm. as team captain. No, eso fue como de último. Eso not fue exactly. De Things that happened while the woman was away. Mm, maybe, yeah. maybe, okay. The style of the new team's uniforms. No fue el enfoque, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. the so it should be, in my opinion, between A and C. Maybe, okay. So let's let's see what we can uh, we can learn from here. I think it's the third. See, mm -hmm. let's play the it audio. Is. And an example of a just purpose question is, why does the student go to see the coach? Ah, okay, very good. So look, at the beginning, he he was explaining a just purpose question. The main idea. Uh, I'm sorry, the gist contact question. But this one is a gist purpose question. Okay. It is explaining why. Why does the student go to see the coach? A, to see how she would prepare for next game. Okay, maybe. To find out her responsibilities as team captain. And no, porque ella no sabía, ¿verdad? She didn't know she was going to be team captain. Uh, C, to find out what happened while she was away? Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To that discuss yes. to discuss the style of the uniforms? Um, no. No, no. no the letter C. So I think it's going to be uh, letter C, right? Yeah, to find out what happened. What All right. Story. Yeah, because she was not there and she was trying to get information what happened. Uh, maybe any update or something like that about right. the team. Good. So you saw the difference, right? Just content and just purpose questions. Just so you can see that. This is a just content question. It is talking about the main idea. And then we have a just purpose question. It's talking about the why. Okay, just purpose question. It's talking about why, all right? 
So, no sé si captaron algo que dije, dijo el video. Um, en cada pasaje van a ver una de esas. Va a ser la primera pregunta. Va a ser un just content question or a just purpose question. Okay. okay. Esa va a ser su primera pregunta en cada después de but, eh, escuchar en cada pasaje. But never both. But never both. Ajá, uh -huh, exacto. Él, él dijo never both. Very good. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Whichever question is asked, you can figure out the answer by focusing on the main point of the conversation or lecture. The female student tells us her reason for going to see the coach in the early part of the conversation when she says this. I just thought I'd stop by to see what I missed while I was gone. That tells us both mm -hmm. the main idea of the conversation and why she went to see the coach. So for both questions, the best answer is C. All right, good job. You guys did good. Here's a tip for improving your listening skills. Listen to academic lectures in English as much as possible. Be sure to listen to lectures in various subject areas, science, social science, business, arts, literature. You can search online for universities that post their lectures for free. Start with short lectures on topics you are familiar with, then build up to longer ones on topics that are not familiar to you. Listen to the same lecture multiple times if you need to. There are lots of ways to improve your English skills. Whatever you do, keep practicing. And good luck on your TOEFL test. All right, good job. Very good. So, le voy a pasar ese video allí in, in uh, WhatsApp so you guys can have the video, right? Um, it's, it's from the TOEFL University. Okay, any questions? All right, so right now we have about 25 minutes. Let's go into the test and let's see how much. Vamos a ver si lo podemos terminar. Si no lo terminamos, don't worry. It's just practice. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is write down your answers. Okay. So, escriben ahí su respuesta. Solo pongan a, uh, the letter. Just put number one, A, number two, C, number. Just put the number and the letter. Okay. At the end of the video, we're going to check. All right. Let me open the audio. Give me a second. Okay, we're very good. So I'm going to go ahead and share. Uh, where is it? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can do it. No, this is a screen. Uh, can you see this? Uh, it says, here's a complete listening practice. Do you see that? No, 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 no. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to try now. Can you see this? Here's a complete listening practice. Pueden ver esto? No? Yes, I can see it. Yes, oh, you can see? Okay, okay, very yeah. good. All right, es que no me sale ahí que dice you are sharing screen. All right, so. If I remember right, he won't be back until, uh... Okay, ¿pueden escuchar también? Can you listen? No? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, very good. So let's go ahead and write down your answers, okay? Number one. Passage number one. Ready? Yeah. Listen to a part of a conversation between a student and a college administrator. Hi, how can I help you? Oh, hi. Um, I'm looking for the chemistry professor, Professor Dean. Is he around? Uh, is this the floor where he works? Yeah, this is the floor. He works down the hall, but uh, no, he's not in his office right now. Oh, um, do you know when he'll be available? Actually, he just left this morning for a vacation, 
if I remember right, he won't be back until, uh, let's see, he won't be back until Sunday. Until then, he will be out of the state. Can what you need wait until then? Oh no, I'm off on a trip all next week, and after that it might be too late. I'd really prefer to talk to him now rather than later. Um, do you know if he's still accepting interviews to be his teacher's assistant this semester? You want to work for him? Yes, if he's still looking for one, I'd like, I'd like to interview for the position. You know, Professor Dean is a pretty well-liked professor. I'm sure he's taken a lot of interviews already. Yeah, the department had told me that might be the case. That's why I came as soon as I had time. I even pulled an all-nighter last night to prepare for the interview. I'm hoping he'll let me be his TA even though, <laughs> well, <laughs> there really are a lot of talented students at this school and I'm just a freshman. And you know, I'm going abroad next semester, and I heard Dean might be retiring soon, so this could be my only chance. Oh, wow, really? Most students wait at least a year to go abroad. Yeah, well, um, there's this great art scholarship that lets people go to Germany, and somehow I got it, and I felt like that was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. You didn't plan ahead for being Professor Dean's TA? Well, actually, I've admired his work for a while, since before I came to this college, but I only heard that he took undergraduate TAs, like, three days ago. And I would have come in sooner, but, you know, homework and classes and... Well, maybe you could send an email to the professor asking for an interview the day he gets back and see if he says yes. I mean, that would be a good idea, but Professor Dean is supposedly famous for not checking his emails very often. I mean, I could just wait outside his office on Sunday. At least there would be no way to miss him. Now, I'm sure that'd be very uncomfortable for you. And it, uh, you probably wouldn't make the best impression on him. I, um, I have an idea. I know that he has a work phone, which he does check often, and I have the number. How about I call it and leave a message saying that someone wants an interview with him on Sunday? Really? I'd really appreciate that. And, you know, after thinking about it, I'll send him an email, too, just in case. Okay, question number one. What does the main imply about calling the professor's work phone? between C and D. Okay, all right, write the answer and then uh, we're going to check after. So make sure you write the answer and take notes. Number two, why is the student concerned that the professor is on vacation? I'm going to read the question and you guys answer. Y el tiempo no lo estoy controlando yo, sino que es el, el mismo tiempo del, del test. Number three, why does the man mention that Professor Dean has taken many interviews already? Number four, why is the student going abroad? I mean, I could just wait outside his office on Sunday. At least there would be no way to miss him. Now, I'm sure that'd be very uncomfortable for you. And it, uh, you probably wouldn't make the best impression on him.
Number five, why does the man say Oh, I'm sure that'd be very uncomfortable for you. Number two. Listen to part of a lecture in a marine biology class. I hope you all have been keeping up on the recent journal articles about the Mariana Trench. We've been sending a lot of probes down there recently, some that are mapping out terrain from above, and others that are actually landing on the ocean floor. And they've been giving us uh, lots of data that have given our scientists new insight into things we really wish we'd known earlier. Is there anything you found particularly interesting in all the articles? A lot of them have been mentioning man-made pollution down there, which is really odd to me. I think of the Mariana Trench as being completely untouched. A lot of people think the same way. You know, before the modern era, we didn't even know that the Mariana Trench existed, so obviously people didn't think about how they were affecting it. You know, for the Mariana Trench and other uh, dark and mysterious places under the ocean, a lot of public perception back then was based on old sailors' tales. It was thought of being a vast wasteland with big, dangerous... Oh right, they thought there were sea monsters, huh? My parents told me those tales when I was younger. I mean, I can't believe it. Why would anyone... Well, things always look silly when you're looking from the future. But those ideas were really all we had back then. Anyway, we started thinking about our impact on the Mariana Trench back in the 1960s, when we were first able to send probes that could hover above the trench. The data showed a pristine area where the only things around were a couple of organisms, though uh, nothing that could be considered a sea monster. So yeah, this view of the Mariana Trench after this first probe was that untouched wilderness that Janice mentioned. But we continued to visit the Mariana Trench in the 1970s, and with the technology we developed, we were able to actually land on the seafloor, so we could take more detailed pictures of what was going on, and we discovered a few unfortunate facts. The trench contained, uh, it contains, a lot more man-made toxins than we thought, poison gases mostly. There were also signs of industrial waste, some of which looked like it had been down there for decades. So we concluded that humans were having a much bigger impact down there than we thought. Now, whose fault do you think it was? Ship trade, leaving pollutants and debris in the water. That was one factor, and another was just everyday humans, people like you or me. Today, the oceans are full of garbage that have built up from centuries of litter. Uh, notoriously, there's a huge garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean that measures twice the size of the United States. But before human interference, we can imagine a place that only had a few organisms, a little bit of volcanic gas, and nothing else that could affect the ecosystem. So maybe the Mariana Trench once wasn't just another victim of human negligence. Maybe at one point, uh, it was an almost perfectly empty world separate from everywhere else. Now, let's talk about the present day, when some of the most technologically advanced probes have been diving into the trench. And because of an increase of government support for pollution research, we've got not only sophisticated probes, but a lot of them as well. We've been getting all sorts of interesting data, and thankfully, the data is telling us a lot of good can be done for the trench. Janice, you mentioned that some of the journal articles mentioned pollution. Did any of them mention solutions? Well, they were talking about how some industry was uh, creating a sort of bacteria that could eat and digest the pollution, like oil. They said since we currently have bacteria like that, all we need to do is adapt them to be able to survive being deep underwater for a lot of time. But I didn't really understand all of that. That's understandable. There's a lot of work, a lot of companies trying to get into pollution reduction. A lot of their solutions are kind of doubtful, but there are also some solutions that are being developed that are absolutely ingenious. If only we could send humans down there in a submarine, we could gather even better data, but that's impossible currently. 
Anyway, if pollution reduction methods continue to be developed, we might be able to make the Mariana Trench what it once was, something pristine, protected by the humans that once heard it. Maybe the Mariana Trench could be healthy once again. Okay, wow, that was long. <laughs> Number six, what does the professor mainly discuss? So this is a gist content question, main idea. Number seven, what is the professor's opinion about recent explorations of the Mariana Trench? Number eight, why does the professor mention a huge garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean? Number nine, what does the professor say about sending humans into the Mariana Trench? Number 10, why does the woman mention bacteria that eat pollution? Okay, let's, oh, let's uh, listen to this part again. It's gonna a be a lot question. of them have been mentioning man-made pollution down there, which is really odd to me. I think of the Mariana Trench as being completely untouched. What does the student imply? I think imply? of the Mariana Trench as being completely untouched. What does the student imply when she says, I think of the Mariana Trench as being untouched. All right, we're going to stop here to check the answers because of the time, okay? So we did 10 questions or 10, 11 questions, I think. Okay. So let's check. Listen to part of a lecture from an e Let's check the answers. I think we did 11 questions, right? All right. Check your answers. Number one, C. Number two, A. Number three, D. Four, B. Five, A. Six, B. Seven, A. 8A, 9C, 10B, 11C. I think that's it, right? I... Okay. Very good. All right, I'm going to stop sharing now so we can go back and check. All right. Okay, questions, right? The second conversation was very long, right? That one 
¿Cómo se titula ese tipo de, de exercise? ¿Se acuerdan? Lecture. That was a lecture, right? The first one, number, uh, the first was a conversation. And then the second one was a lecture. So, vieron que la lecture son mucho más larga, ¿verdad? Okay. All right, go. ¿Cómo, cómo hicieron ustedes? Sus resultados. What do you think? ¿Cómo salieron? I just want to share one thing that it happened to me mm -hmm. on the second um, recording. Mm -hmm. That I was not really, my vocabulary is not the greatest. But um, I was trying to understand more, and more like the idea of the whole conversation rather than trying to focus in on what I was not understanding. Mm -hmm. And at the end, um, actually, I did pretty good um, doing that because if you say on one word that you are not understanding, you are going mm -hmm. to miss the whole idea, or you know, mm -hmm. um, you are not going to be capable of. of to follow the mm -hmm. whole conversation or to go back because you will be thinking in your mind of whatever you heard and you didn't yeah. understand. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Alejandra. Thank you for bringing that up, right? Uh, sometimes we think, oh, I have to know the, all the vocabulary in the, sub, in the subject, right? No, you don't. You don't have to know the vocabulary in the subject, right? And that's a good example. Even in Spanish, we don't have. Uh, you don't you don't have what the the best vocabulary uh, yeah yeah that's true so that's good you know you don't have to have any knowledge of the subject right and if you don't understand one word as long as you're following the conversation uh, the 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 attitude of the speaker the tone of the speaker why is he saying this and and you understand the main idea at the beginning that's it Okay. All right. So remember, the, the main idea is probably the most important thing, right? Because it's, it's a main idea, te guía, right? For the rest of the thing. Uh, any other questions or comments? How did you guys feel? Do you think you can do, you can do this test? Yes? Well, I got two out of 11 wrong, so I need to get better. Okay. So you got... Two out of 11 wrong, but that's still pretty good, right? Uh, so you got nine correct. That's still, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Very good. What about you, Wilfredo? How do you feel? Um, well, I feel, uh, I feel confident about it. I just got about five of 11. No. Okay. All right. Very good. I only got five, so... So you have to see what can I improve? Can maybe take better notes, right? Maybe learn how to take notes. That's going to help you. Yeah, right? that's. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's, uh, I would... So my recommendation is that you guys practice um, on YouTube, right? De ahí saque este, este video, right? Right there from YouTube. And it's completely free. Um, hay uno que tiene la respuesta que dice answer key at the end and you go to, towards, the, to, towards the end of the video you're going to see the answer key so practice that and what you can do is practice note taking right like become a master at note taking right just note taking mm -hmm. become become a master at note taking right so I mean there's a lot of a lot of different strategies right Pueden usar WH questions, what, when, how, where, why, right? Pueden usar la estrategia que aprendimos ahora, just context questions and just purpose questions, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, very good. So uh, I'm going to send you the video about the lesson for today, which was just context question and just purpose questions, right? That was the lesson. Okay. And then, eh, el video este no lo puedo mandar por WhatsApp porque es muy largo, right? Pero ahí en YouTube, you guys can find some, some different tests. Some similars. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, so go to TOEFL, right. TOEFL IBT listening practice and you, you're going to get different type of tests that are on there, okay? And practice um, 
one of the tips that was on the video that we saw, the video that we saw to see, uh, listen to lectures, right? Go to and di di listen to different lectures. Um, there's a channel, no sé si ustedes han escuchado TED Talks, T-E-D, TED Talks. Uh, that is a channel. Let me see if I can show you uh, a quick, a quick channel on YouTube where there are lectures. Uh, let me see. Eh, Pueden ver mi YouTube, sí. Eh, TED Talks, se escribe. TED Talks. Um, el canal es TED, T-E-D. Significa algo, se me olvidó. <laughs> ¿Qué significa? But uh, what you click on the channel and you're going to find a lot of... Always wear sunscreen. Eat a balanced diet. A pen you're going to find a lot of different lectures, okay? Some lectures, 10, 15 minutes, people are talking about different topics, uh, work, life, success, uh, science, technology, whatever. I thought Bill Gates, right? Listen, talking, giving some tips, some motivation. Uh, Pueden escuchar algo así? Or ir directamente a los practice tests que están en YouTube. Okay, that's, that's my recommendation, right? Uh, do it a few times, right? Uh, practice, no sé, todavía tienen, creo que eh, módulo uno, eh, uno, dos y tres, ¿verdad? Están tomando para este examen, so tienen dos meses más. You know, if you, if you practice one a day in, in two months, you're going to be much better. You're going to be really good at this. All right, guys. All right, take care. Have a good have a good night, all right? And I'll see you tomorrow. If you have any questions, let me know. No, no wishes and have a nice night. night. All right, all right, have a right. good night, Thank everybody. You. Have a good night, too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.